there are four different VLA problems which are standard. Uh, you see, before going into the discussion, we have for a binary system, let us discuss it. <coughs> for a binary system, we have x, y, t and p. Right, these are the variables and two phase equilibrium <coughs> relations. So, degrees of freedom definitely it is equal to 2 and which is also consistent with the Gibbs phase rule because number of component is 2, number of phases is 2 plus 2 which is temperature and pressure. <coughs> so, any the problems are complicated definitely if x y is provided t p you have to solve it is easy. But the problems are complicated when either x or in x y set 1 is provided and in p t set 1 is provided. So, in the first two cases t is provided right either x or y is provided. And the second case is P is provided, but T is not provided. So, these are relatively the last two are relatively more complicated problem. So, let us first uh, just state the different problems standard VLE problems. The first one it is called bubble P given t is given x is given find y and p second du p here it is given t and y they are given find x and p third bubble t here what is given uh, it is x is given p is given find t and y and lastly it is duty given y and p find x and t. So, this is the most complicated it involves two simultaneous loops ok nested loops. So, we will discuss how it can be solved. So, the first problem bubble P so this is quite simple you see that uh, <coughs> We have two equations y into p is equal to x1 gamma 1 p1 sat y1 into p and x y2 into p equal to x2 gamma 2 p2 sat. So, if you add these two equations, you will get p is equal to x1 gamma 1 p1 sat plus x2 gamma 2 p2 sat. So, what will be the algorithm? First, you see knowing T evaluate P1 sat and P2 sat. Second, knowing x and t <coughs> evaluate gamma 1 and gamma 2 using a suitable activity coefficient model. So, 
3 you know this x right you have already evaluated gamma 1 and gamma 2 p1 sat and p2 sat calculate p is equal to x1 gamma 1 p1 sat plus x2 gamma 2 p2 sat <coughs> solve for y1 is equal to x1 gamma 1 p1 sat divided by p and y2 as 1 minus y1. So finally output it's p y is equal to y1. So that is the bubble p solution. Now in du p this is a non iterative this is a direct solution it is the easiest one and you see in the du p <coughs> once we try to execute this step 2 immediately we face the problem because we do not know x here x is to be solved. So, here <coughs> we have to go by an iteration. So, next let us discuss du p problem right temperature given y given but we do not know x neither we do p right. So, you see this uh, x 1 is equal to y 1 p divided by gamma 1 p 1 set plus or and and uh, x 2 is equal to y 2 p divided by gamma 2 into p 2 set. So, p is equal to if I add this to 1 divided by y 1 gamma 1 p 1 sat plus y 2 divided by gamma 2 into p 2 sat. So, this is the equation which we are going to use for solving this du p problem and what will be the algorithm let us discuss it. And note that gamma 1 and gamma 2 are functions of x 1 and t. First knowing t evaluate p 1 sat and p 2 sat. For the first iteration k equal to 1 assume gamma 1 equal to gamma 2 equal to 1. 3 evaluate p as 1 divided by summation y i divided by gamma i p i sat i equal to 1 to 2. So, the first iteration definitely we have to assume this gamma equal to 1. 4 evaluate x 1 prime which is y is given y 1 into p divided by this uh, <coughs> gamma 1 into p 1 sat and x 2 prime as y 2 into p by gamma 2 into p 2 sat right. They are actually not the exact x 1 and x 2 it is an intermediately generated normalize x 1 prime and x 2 prime as x 1 is equal to x 1 prime divided by summation of x i prime and x 2 prime is equal to x 2 divided by summation of x i prime. So, x 1 and x 2 values has been generated 6 knowing x 1 and x 2 x 1 
and t solve for gamma 1 and gamma 2. <coughs> Evaluate p nu as p is equal to 1 divided by summation y i divided by gamma i into p i z. If now we have to go for this convergence condition mod p nu minus p old is less than epsilon then generate the output as p comma x else set p is equal to p nu and <coughs> we have to again evaluate this x1 prime x2 prime and we have to go back so and go to step 4. So, this is the du p algorithm right and we have a loop from 4 and 8. So, that is an intermediate uh, if you like it in C it will be for loop and if it is in Fortran it will be do loop. So, intermediately this loop will circulate and convergence criteria will be uh, there at the end of this loop. So, <coughs> next if we apply the same approach gamma and p is given find t and y immediately the first step that p 1 sat p 2 sat we are we fail to evaluate them. So, we have to generate a tentative guess value of t right. So, how we can generate that let us see. See we know the Anthon's equation or Athwa's equation p 1 sat p i sat is equal to a i minus b i divided by t plus c. So, b i divided by t plus c is equal to a i minus ln of p i sat. So, b i divided by a i minus ln of p i sat equal to b i divided by a i minus ln of p i sat minus c equal to t right. That is Anthon's equation or Athua's equation written in the reverse form, but you see if I write it as a i b i minus a i divided by ln of p minus c we are supposed to get t i sat saturation temperature right and a tentative guess of the saturation temperature will be summation of x i or y i which is whatever is available into t i sat i equal to 1 to 2. So, this will be my initial guess and there will be another um, equation by which we have to regenerate the new temperature. How we can do that? We will use our old uh, the previously discussed concept that here regeneration of temperature that is T nu how we can regenerate this. See that uh, P 1 sat and P 2 sat are strong functions of temperature. However, the ratio as we have discussed previously P 1 by P 2 sat it is nearly independent 
of temperature. So this fact we will explore actually to regenerate the new temperature value. So algorithm we are discussing here bubble tea problem. Now the algorithm will be first given its p and x we have to find t and y right. Solve for t1 sat and T2 sat using the equation Ti sat equal to Bi minus divided by Ai minus ln P minus Ci. So we can solve this knowing pressure, we can solve for T1 sat and T2 sat. Generate T as summation, here x is given, so xi into Ti sat as the initial guess. Number 3. Calculate P1 sat and P2 sat knowing T. For as we know X, we can also calculate what? We can calculate this, uh, this gamma 1 and gamma 2. Calculate gamma 1 and gamma 2 using a suitable activity coefficient model. Knowing T and X1. So gamma 1, gamma 2 has been solved, we know temperature, we know saturation pressure, right. So <coughs> why in order to calculate we have to predict this T and simultaneously we have to calculate Y. So you see this uh, P we have seen just X1 gamma 1 P1 sat plus x2 gamma 2 p2 sat. So in order to reduce it in the form of this ratio, so p divided by p1 sat x1 gamma 1 plus x2 gamma 2 or rather p divided by okay p1 sat it is no matter whether it is p1 sat or by p2 sat or p2 sat by p1 sat it is all the same. So p1 sat we can write as P divided by X1 gamma 1 plus X2 gamma 2 P2 sat by P1 sat. Right. So, <coughs> calculate P1 sat nu as P1 sat is equal to P divided by x1 gamma 1 plus x2 gamma 2 p2 sat by p1 sat. Generate T nu knowing p1 sat nu using Anton's or Atua's equation. Seven, if T new minus T old 
is less than epsilon, then generate the output as T nu or T whatever and Y1 which is equal to gamma 1 x 1 p 1 sat divided by p and y 2 equal to 1 minus y 1. Else set t equal to t nu or let us say this is t, t equal to t nu and go back to step where we have evaluated the vapor pressure. So, step 3. So, we have to go back to step 3. So, here we have the loop from 7 to 3 and it will circulate unless this T is converged and we have generated the output. Now, in the next what you will see that in duty problem we have the problem here gamma 1 gamma 2 we cannot evaluate as we do not know x 1 and x 2 and here we have to change that is uh, fine, but here we have to go for the loop what we have used in duty. Okay, so that we will be discussing the next. So lastly, we are going to discuss about this duty problem. Here, vapor phase composition and pressure is given. We have to find out liquid phase composition and temperature. So as we have mentioned, or I have mentioned that we will face the problem in this fourth step if I want to alg Im implement the same algorithm of bubble tea in total. So, here we have to go for another loop. So, let us discuss about the algorithm duty. First, solve for T1 sat and T2 sat using the equation T i sat is equal to B i divided by A i minus L n p minus C i. Next generate T as summation of here y is given. So, y i T i sat as the initial case. So, you have generated this T as the initial guess. 3 is Calculate the vapor pressure that is P1 sat and P2 sat knowing temperature for assume gamma 1 is equal to gamma 2 equal to 1 and proceed for step 5. So, <coughs> gamma 1 gamma 2 that is equal to 1 we have assumed. So, assuming that we have to calculate first x 1. So, but it this this may not this x 1 and x 2 calculated in this way may not satisfy the normalizing condition that is x 1 plus x 2 equal to 1. So, we have to go for separately calculating both that is p y 1 divided by gamma 1 p 1 sat and x 2 prime is equal to 
p y 2 divided by gamma 2 p 2 sat. 6 normalize x 1 prime and x 2 prime as this. Knowing temperature and x1, now evaluate gamma 1 and gamma 2 nu, right. Next, if gamma i nu minus gamma i old is less than epsilon for i equal to 1 to 2, set gamma i is equal to gamma i nu or, or basically we do not have to set it for 1 to 2 then proceed to step 9 else set gamma i is equal to gamma i nu and go back to step 5. So, from here to here we have a do loop or for loop. Next, so for a given temperature gamma will be iterated and converged. However, the temperature may not be accurate. It needs its own convergence. So, that will be the external loop, right. And that is more or less identical with the previous. So, what we have to do? 9 generate the same, generate T nu, oh sorry, gener, uh, gener, uh, not generate, first we have to calculate the new vapor pressures, mm, but already hmm, calculate. P1 sat nu as P divided by x1 gamma 1, x2 gamma 2, P2 sat by P1 sat generate this uh, T nu from P1 sat nu using Anthon's equation and next go for the convergence shaking. If T nu minus T old is less than epsilon, then generate output as t comma x else set t equal to t nu and go back to step which one where we have calculated p1 sat and p2 sat 3. Right. So, it is a kind of nested loop we have to use here. Internal loop is for convergence of gamma that is the activity coefficient and external loop is for the convergence of temperature. Okay. So, that is the overall idea of four different types of VLE problems. Additionally, we have another applications of VLE which is pertinent in undergrad that is flash calculation and it is a multi component flash calculation.
So, you see flash is a single stage continuous distillation process. So, let me describe the process in brief. We have the multi component feed. First, we increase the pressure of the feed before heating it, right. Next, there will be a heater. So, this is pump. Next, we will have a heater and next the pressure will be reduced by means of a flash valve and in the downstream we have the separated drum fitted with baffles. So, here from we will be getting the vapor phase with the composition y i and liquid phase with composition x i. So, feed is f and z i right. Now, you see why we are increasing the pressure if I am reducing it because it is to be heated and we do not want any vaporization in the heater. So, it will be pressurized then heated then it will be throttled or flashed and it separates out into two phases attaining equilibrium because there are baffles and also we consider there are enough there is enough residence time for this gas phase and liquid phase to attain equilibrium right. So, the flash drum temperature is temp T and P and we consider this is a kind of T P flash where the temperature and pressure of the flash drum are specified. Hmm? Example of pressure temperature or P T flash or T P flash so see in real life in real process industry uh, it may not be a PT flash it is an ideal most analysis mostly we have PQ flash ok. So, mostly the heat given will be supplied the pressure will be supplied so it is it is a kind of PQ flash but that we are not going to discuss we are here discussing the PT flash which is the easiest type of problem ok. So, <coughs> You see that in this process first our objective will be to calculate what is the vapor phase produced, vapor phase composition, liquid phase produced and the liquid composition. So, overall material balance, overall material balance is simple F is equal to V plus L and component material balance is F z i V y i plus L x i right. So, we can further simplify it as z i equal to V by F y i plus 1 minus V by F here we are using overall material balance into x i. So, that we write as xi into y i plus 1 minus xi into xi, where xi is the vapor fraction which we are producing which we are producing from the feed ok. So, next we have equilibrium relation. What is that? Yi is equal to Ki xi that is the typical equilibrium relation. Now, you see here point to be noted if I use general VLE, this was a great question. We know that we have yi into capital phi i, right? Capital phi i is a function of temperature, pressure, and yi into P is equal to xi, gamma is a function of temperature and xi into Pi sat, which is a function of temperature into P f which is a function of pressure and temperature. So, equilibrium constant y i by x i that is k i is going to be a function of temperature, pressure, liquid phase composition and vapor phase composition if I am using the general VLE. Now, if it is a modified Raoult's law.
then y i by x i is basically gamma i p i sat divided by t. So, it is a function of x i liquid phase composition temperature and pressure. Now, alternatively if I use simply the Raoult's law k i which is y i by x i is p i sat by p and that is a function of temperature and pressure only. So, in each step we are attaining simplification. So, the functional dimension of k actually getting reduced. Okay? So, that is the equilibrium relation. Now, we may use this general VLE, we may use modified Raoult's law, we may use Raoult's law based that depends on the situation. And lastly, we have summability relations. There is simply the sum of the mole fractions equal to 1. Now, how many equations, if anyone asks that how many equations we are getting? Now, we can eliminate actually the component overall material balance because if I write let the number of components is equal to n, right. So, component material balance or general material balance equation, material balance equation, the number is equal to n, right. The equilibrium relation that is also equal to n. Summability that is 2. So, total number of equations is n plus 2. Now, how many variables we have? We have y i x i temperature pressure L and V. So, n n and 4. So, 2 n plus 4 and here it will be 2 n plus 2. So, degrees of freedom is 2 n plus 4 minus 2 n plus 2 equal to 2. So, we have to specify this heat we are not considering here right because the pressure temperature is specified. So, we have to specify this because heat why you are not considering because if I consider q, q dot here there will be another enthalpy equation hmm, that we are not considering. So, if I consider q here there will be another enthalpy balance equation. So, degrees of freedom remains 2. So, we have to specify any two of these process variables right and generally it is here for this PT flash we are specifying pressure and temperature of the flash drum. Okay. So, how to solve for this uh, L V then Y i and X i because these are the unknowns for a PT flash problem. So, you see this Z i is equal to xi into yi plus 1 minus xi into xi. So, xi into ki into xi we are using equilibrium relation here 1 minus xi into xi. So, xi if I take common. So, 1 plus ki minus 1 into xi right ki minus 1 into xi. So, xi is equal to z i divided by 1 plus k i minus 1 into z i and y i is equal to k i z i divided by 1 plus k i minus 1 whole bracket into z i. Right. Now, you see we are left with this we have already used material balance equilibrium and we are left with summability. So, summability if I use we can use summation of x i minus 1 equal to 0 that may be a tentative function for solution of xi because first we are good trying to solve xi right. And 
initially that and that is the thing we are going to discuss we will consider Raoult's law ok. Let Raoult's law is valid that is k i is a function of temperature and pressure. So, as the temperature and pressure are specified so obviously we know the values of k i right. Now, if I write this sort of function to solve for this xi, what problem we may face? Let us discuss that. You see, then f1 xi is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n number of components k i minus 1 whole bracket xi minus 1 that is a function. Now, this function may not be monotonic because if it is monotonic see it is advantageous to solve for xi if f1 xi is monotonic function. Because we are going to solve it or we have to solve it numerically upon applying Newton Raphson method. Right. Now, you see in the Newton Raphson method, if you just again brush up what is the graphical interpretation of Newton Raphson technique. So, we are giving a guess x0 from there we are drawing a tangent and again we are moving towards the solution. So, if the function is monotonic the convergence is assumed right. So, if the function is monotonic then definitely the derivative of this function with respect to independent variable that is xi must be either positive or negative. So, let us check. So, this will be sorry here k i minus 1 right. <coughs> I think it is correct yeah. So, this is a non monotonic function because we do not know the values of k i whether it is greater than 1 or less than 1 right. So, it may be greater or less than 0. So, that is non monotonic. It may be monotonic, but for many system it may not be right. So, it is not universally assured that this is going to be a monotonic function. So, similar to summation of x i minus 1 equal to 0 we can use f 2 xi which is summation of y i minus 1 equal to 0 right at solution. So, there f 2 xi becomes 1 to n then k i z i divided by 1 plus k i minus 1 into xi minus 1. So, again if we check the derivative k i into k i minus 1 and this may be greater or less than 0. So, monotonicity of this trial function is not ensured if I directly use the summability relation ok. So, that is why long back in 1947 or 49 Rashford and Rice they introduce a special type of function considering these two summability relation which is monotonic right. To ensure monotonicity of the function Rashford and Rice 
have introduced a special function nowadays known as rashford rice function right fxi fxi is what is summation of i i minus summation of xi which is supposed to be zero at the solution right so let's check the monotonicity so fxi is equal to i equal to 1 to n k i minus 1 right into z i so here we have missed the z i so k i minus 1 into z i 1 plus k i minus 1 into z i right and that must be equal to 0. So d f d z i if I consider it is i equal to 1 to n k i minus 1 whole square into z i divided by k i minus 1 into z i whole square and this is always negative. So, this is monotonic function, right. So, Rashford Rice function is monotonic and we will use the Rashford Rice function to solve multi component flash problem, okay. So, once xi from here, once xi is solved, definitely you can get this xi, yi, and if I know the total feed flow rate, we can solve for L and V because V is nothing but xi into F and L is equal to 1 minus xi into f, okay. Now, uh, so this algorithm, if I try to formulate, it is quite easy and simple, right, because we have considered Raoult's law only. So, from the Raoult's law, it can be solved very easily for xi. However, before going into that actual solution, the function, the Rashford Rice function is big for even say three component, it is quite large, right, and mathematically complicated. So, we have to solve for this Newton Raphson and it in involves certain computation time. So, first, before we go into this solution for xi, first we have to check whether the flashing is at all happening or not, okay. So, you see that if for that, if I look into this px plot for a binary system even, right. So, you are here, this is the liquid phase, this is p, this is p versus x, this is p versus y. So, if this is, this is the bubble and this is the dew, right, dew point pressure and the bubble point pressure. If P is, if P is less than P bubble and greater than P dew, then flashing is possible. So, we have to find out this bubble point pressure and dew point pressure. Now, you see for bubble point, we know that P is equal to this Xi, Pi sat, the summation of that, right. And what is Xi here? This is the liquid phase. What is Xi here? Xi is equal to Zi, the feed composition, right. So, P bubble equal to summation of P i sat into z i, i equal to 1 to n, okay. And here the dew point pressure calculation needs that y i equal to z i. Now, x i is P into y i divided by P i sat and P summation of y i by P i sat equal to 1. So, P in terms of y i we can write it like this. And dew point pressure will be simply the same expression with y i being replaced by z i. 
okay so we have got the calculation of bubble point pressure and dew point pressure so algorithm for pt flash with ideal vapor and liquid phases what will be the algorithm first step 1 input p t z i next calculate p bubble summation of z i into p i sat and p dew 1 divided by summation of z i by p i sat if p is less than p bubble and greater than p dew then proceed for step 4 else generate output as flashing is not possible so you have to generate this output simply for if it is true then solve for or calculate or already this p okay so this is here we can write calculate P I sat, knowing temperature. So this is three. This is four. Right. So proceed to step five. Okay. So five is. We have to generate and solve the Rashford Rice function. Okay. First, better before that, uh, estimate. K I equal to P I sat by P for I equal to one comma n. Next, once K I are known, solve for Z I using Rashford Rice function based on Newton-Raphson method. right estimate xi is equal to zi divided by 1 plus ki minus 1 into xi and yi is equal to ki zi divided by 1 plus ki minus 1 whole bracket into xi right output xi Y I and Z I nine stop and end. So that's the flash calculation. So the point to be noted is the bubble point and dew point. What you are going to calculate, and from there, bubble point pressure and dew point pressure. What you are going to calculate, and from there, check the feasibility of flash operation, and after that. Go for solving Zai using Newton-Raphson method. Now you see, if Ki is a function of temperature, pressure, and this liquid phase and vapor phase composition, then there will be three different loops. Okay, one is for Xi, another is for Yi, another is for this Zai. The internal will be for Zai, the outer one for Xi, next outer one for Yi, or simultaneous loops are to be. Uh, used and these are going to be called class one algorithm where we are tearing the loop based on our uh, this uh, this assumption we have to put some guess value of x 
Alternatively, we can solve all the equations simultaneously. That is called class 2 algorithm. But class 1 and class 2 algorithm, what was observed for multi-component flash, it's quite complicated and numerically, it most of the time is costly and most of the time it may not converge. The same algorithm which converges for one system may not converge for other. So, they are not generalized. So, after that, around 1975 or something, Boston and Breit, they introduced a different algorithm which I am not going to discuss. It is called inside out algorithm and there the primary variables, primary variables are xi, yi, temperature, etc. So, these primary variables are not being treated as iteration variable. However, the therm some thermodynamic parameters, the empirical thermodynamic parameters like somewhat associated to this Ki, right, be based on some empirical models or some associated to the denthalpy, etc. These are were considered as iteration variable because they were less sensitive to temperature and composition. So, based on that, whatever was inside, inside means these parameters were previously in class 1 and class 2 algorithm were solved internally inside loop right or they are determined for a given set of primary variables. Now, in this boston brit algorithm they were switched out ok, they were switched out and they were considered as a fundamental iteration variables and that is why the algorithm is called inside out algorithm. Nowadays the same inside out algorithm actually runs or, and it is different modified version actually runs as a background of these different commercial uh, process simulation packages like Aspen or HiSys or Pro2 etc. So, anyway that is the all about VLE problems and another topic of pertaining to this uh, multi component mixing property and miscibilities and all we have already discussed it. It is basically the excess properties relation already I have discussed, but just I am mentioning it, I am going to mention it like property change on mixing already we have discussed for real solution property change upon pure mixing and we have seen that delta m mix is equal to delta m mix id for ideal solution plus the excess property that we have discussed and from there for miscible systems we must have convexity of delta g mix with respect to x right or x1 ok and we have concluded this delta g mix dx1 square that must be this uh, positive right and from there also we have shown that the implication in this activity uh, this activity coefficient for this condition will be this greater than minus of 1 by xi right d l n gamma i d x i must be greater than minus of 1 by x i that we have established and proved previously. So, that is all about the VLE problem in the next session we are going to discuss about the chemical reaction equilibrium. Thank you.